So far, we have looked at circuits which featured DC voltage sources. These are easy to understand since we are used to seeing DC power supplies in our daily lives. Examples of these are batteries, laptop and phone chargers. In circuits, however, we can also have current sources. These are somewhat a little bit more abstract and not as easy to understand, but what you have to remember is that an ideal DC current source will fix the current on the branch on which it is placed, no matter what we connect to it. The voltage across a current source, however, is entirely defined by the elements connected to it. Let's look at a simple circuit and try to understand a little bit better how these sources operate. So we'll create a new schematic and we'll call it DC current source. Then we press Ctrl L to get ourselves a current source. You can see there are various types, but the one that we want is the DC CS, a DC current source. Double click to select it and then a click to place it on the schematic. Then we press Ctrl L again and find ourselves our resistor. And again, we place that on the schematic like so. Connect everything together and we'll get a ground reference by pressing Ctrl G and we'll place it right here. As you can see, by default, the simulator is giving us units of milliamps. So I'll go to project options and then look at the global units tab and change the units for the current to amps. Click OK. And now I'll change the value of the current source to one amp. Now you can see that the current source and the resistor are on the same branch. So the current source will fix the current through the resistor to one amp. And then the voltage across the resistor will be obviously governed by Ohm's law and it will be one volt. And the current source will also have a voltage across its terminals of one volt because it's in parallel with the resistor. We can add annotations to the circuit schematic as we did previously for both current and voltage. And this confirms what we've just been talking about. What would happen now if we added another resistor in series with R1? So what we can do is press Ctrl C to copy R1, delete the wire here by clicking on it and pressing delete, and then pressing Ctrl V to copy our replica of the resistor and right clicking to rotate it. Now we've got two identical resistances, both of which will have a current of one amp going through them because they're on the same branch as the current source and that fixes the current. Ohm's law again applies. So in this case, we will have a voltage drop of one volt across R2 and an identical voltage drop of one volt across R1. So the overall voltage across the terminals of the current source will have to be two volts, twice what we had before. And this again goes to show how the voltage across the terminals of the current source will be determined entirely by what is connected to it. Now I can delete this resistance and recreate this connection here. And then I can again copy another resistance in parallel this time with R1. The two resistances are the same value and hence we can expect the current coming from the current source to split equally between them. If we simulate, we see exactly that. Now assume that one of the resistances was three ohms instead. The path of least resistance in this case is R1, so you would have more current going through R1 than you would have going through R2. And if we simulate, we see exactly that. The easiest way to calculate the value of these currents is to use the current divider rule. We just need to look at the conductance of R1, which is 1 over R1, and the conductance of R2, which is 1 over R2, and then use the current divider rule, as is shown here. And this will give us the correct values for I1 and I2. What is interesting to do is to again click and delete this wire and now put another resistance right there. What will happen this time? Will this change at all? What happens to the currents that go through R1 and R2? Well, if you simulate, you can see that this has had no effect on the currents going through R1 and R2. And that is because the current source and R3 are on the same branch and the current source fixes the current on that branch. So the current that reaches the node where the current splits between R1 and R2 will be exactly the same dictated by the current source. Of course, R3 has had an effect. It has changed the voltage across the current source. And indeed, if we remove it, and replace it with a short circuit, you will see that our voltage will change from 1.75 volts that it was when R3 was present to 0.75 volts.